I remember when I was growing up that my dad had to completely destroy his library. After he built a house, he built a, a study and it was full of books that the government had banned and he could have gone to jail if those books had been found and tapes and stuff. So I remember my parents on the, you know, on the back lawn, you know, at, at dusk, just throwing lots and lots of materials in there and just having a bonfire because it was either that or one of them goes to jail. And I always look back on that and think how sad that I didn't have access to all those stories. You know, for example, Steve Biko's book, uh, my parents had, and they, they, had, to ban, uh, they had to burn that because it was banned. And you know, Miriam Makeba's music. South Africa in the 80s and 90, early 90s was very closed. It was cut off from the world because of world sanctions and 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 uh, and and because of people like me who lived in you know blacks only areas were even more cut off from the rest of the world. And it was just great to go to a place where you had access to other people's lives and other people's worlds and. It always made me really more hopeful when a lot of people around me were being killed or going to jail or losing friends and it made me feel like there was more to life than what we were living. I think I wouldn't be where I am now. I think I wouldn't have had options and I think that's really the great thing about getting an education is that you, it gives you options. You know, we were definitely put into different roles and were divided and there was the idea that girls were probably meant for housework so we would be taught knitting and we would be taught we would be, have to clean the stoop so when it was cleaning time because if you're taught that you can knit and you can uh, you know wash the floors then it doesn't give you the message that you can move outside the home there were kids whose mothers were not there or both parents were not there to push them to go to school and so they didn't have that kind of uh, support around their education and so they had to stay home. There were girls who were expected to take care of their grandparents when their parents were away at work and they didn't get to go to school. The example of, my, of our caregiver, I think that if she had been able to, um, to go to school, she probably would have had a better job and that would have led to her taking better care of her family. She couldn't move easily within her own world. Like she needed help and support and I, she needed someone like me, not because I was wiser or smarter or anything, but because I had an education, she needed me to hold her hand through doing little things like going to the bank and going to the shops and you know, just I would just write her name down on a piece of paper and that meant that her bills were paid. And um, just how much easier would her life have been if she could have just done that for herself. And, and then that would have, you know, probably if she had had an education, then her children would have had a better chance of getting an education. Going to school did help me become an author because uh, what happened for me was that I, I noticed that a lot of what I was reading and learning about didn't really reflect my own reality and so um, learning to write in school and learning how other people had written their stories helped me write my own story that um, showed the realities of my own life and my own culture and all of that and that's and that's what I try to do as an author is give very you know positive images of young African women and um, in ways that I never got. I didn't have that when I was growing up. And what I knew was that all of us were just always dreaming of a world beyond what, you know, South Africa and apartheid. And I wanted to put that out there. I wanted to write about our stories, what was happening, what led us to throw those stones, what led people to burn schools and burn everything that they thought represented the government. And that's why I wrote Dancing in the Dust. Au nom de la Fédération canadienne des enseignantes et des enseignants, ça me donne plaisir d'ajouter la voix de nos 200 000 membres à la Semaine mondiale d'action, dont le thème est le grand récit. As you know, this year's theme is the big story. 
You know, there are many stories out there that support the education for women and girls. Education changes lives. Schooling changes lives. There are 67 million children out of school right now, and over half of them are girls. I encourage you to go onto the CTF website and to watch the video, Two Girls Born on the Same Day. I think you'll see a difference, and you will see how school can definitely change lives. Education for all means education for everyone. The Canadian Teachers Federation is a proud supporter of the Canadian Global Campaign for Education, and I call on all Canadians to support education for women and girls. C'est un droit, nous y avons droit. Together, we can make it happen. What's your story?